to point to that literally to me proves there is no way that TV fakery even is a remote possibility is the one over the Hudson River where you can barely see the plane. I mean, it's like this little gray blotch with wings. And as it approaches the World Trade Center, it almost blends in as they're similar colors. You know what I'm saying? And this video will coincide with the Jennifer Spell video, the CNN video, all this other stuff, right? And the flash is still there when you can barely see the plane. That flash under the right-hand side of the fuselage, uh, basically a little bit to the left of where the engine would be, is still in the video. So you're telling me that they faked all the uh, the media reports. Then they faked all the amateur footage. No one caught amateur footage of the plane not hitting the building and never released it because the government is all powerful. And that's something they don't control. I mean, for example, you know, when they shot that guy in Oakland and they said, oh, the, oh, the cameras didn't work. And this is in the subway system. About six other people caught it on their cell phone cameras. You know what I'm saying? So someone would have caught the building exploding without a plane hitting it and they wouldn't have been able to doctor it. It would have hit somewhere. You know what I'm saying? On top of that evidence, I mean, you have hundreds of eyewitnesses that a plane hit the building. Then you look at the shape of the hole. It's the exact shape of the hole that the plane hit. In other words, it has the two wing sections. It has the body section in the exact spot the videos show. And then, on I mean, there's just so many things wrong with it. They try to overlay videos on top of one another and say that the landscape is wrong. I can tell you from firsthand from shooting in different, you know, with a wide angle lens, with a regular lens, shooting at 720 by 480 instead of 640 uh, by 360, all these different things, that of course it's going to be different. You're shooting at a, a separate angle from a separate place with a separate type of camera. So the things that they, they try to overlay on top and say this should be there and that shouldn't be seen there is total mm. bull. Okay, it's it's total bull. I can't even tell you how much bull it is. And it, it comes from a theory that was out there pretty much right after the attacks of holograms hitting the, the buildings instead of, you know, TV fakery and all this other stuff. And that woman, you know, she did some good research at first. I met her. She's out of her mind. She had like half of her hair cut up crazily riding a bike and talking about, you know, the, I'm not kidding, man. And this is someone I conversed with back in 2002, thinking that some of her research was legitimate. Don't be fooled. And the main person, by the way, who's behind all this Westcam and the digital fakery and this whole thing, you know, he's a meth addict. I, I met him on the fourth anniversary of 9-11 when we only had Loose Change 1 done. We were working on Loose Change 2nd Edition at the time. And I'm talking to this guy, you know, back and forth, and he's telling me that the videos are faked. And I'm like, well... You're talking about Simon Shack? No, I'm not talking about the guy that actually did the movie. I'm talking about the guy that the research is based on. Um, mm -hmm. I don't even want to say his name, to be honest. You'll, you'll, if you type in Meth Addict, 9-11 uh, Truth, he's insane. He's, he's absolutely out of his mind. He puts up YouTube videos where he's wearing masks and they're talking about the murder of Dan Wallace of We Are Changed. No one murdered Dan Wallace. I happen to know what happened to him. It wasn't a murder. It wasn't foul play. I knew the kid. You know, I, I met him on several occasions. I'm, a, I'm good friends with Luke Radowski. You know, these people, this, all right, the same character was down at Ground Zero this year, right? Okay. While I was handing out DVDs and trying to tell people the truth about 9 11, you want to know what he was doing? I, I'm going to tell you. He was wearing an Alex Jones mask and he was with another person who was dressed up like Puff the Magic Dragon. He was in a Puff the Magic Dragon outfit. OK, while the other lunatic is in an Alex Jones mask, screaming, ranting and raving, has like a flag up of, you know, 9-11 truth co-opted TV fakery. And the other guy is dressed up like Puff the Magic Dragon. Now, I'm trying to have a serious movement where I've got a I'm literally hundreds of people in investigate 9-11 shirts. We have real information, real billboards. We're handing out real DVDs. This guy is with somebody in a Puff the Magic Dragon outfit. I mean, does that sound like legitimate 9-11 truth to you? That does sound comical. Uh, it's worse they, than comical. It's, it's, it's damning to people like myself who are really trying to get a message out there. And people look at this guy and they say he's totally insane. And I'm like, yeah, he is. It's unfortunate he's here. Go ahead. But what, but what do you make, make though? And you don't even have to look at September clues because, the, the, because the, you can look at BBC's original video footage. Uh, Jane Stanley, one of their own journalists, and BBC had, it, it doesn't deny it. She reported the collapse of Building 7 
20 minutes before it yes. happened. Yes, and that's in Loose Change minutes. Final Cut, and let me explain that to you, because they actually admitted after we put that movie out exactly what I thought it was, and, I, and it was what I thought it was. What happens is somebody puts out a report on a news wire, right? And then everybody picks it up. So in other words, one of the people that knew they were bringing that building up, down put the report that, uh, you know, that Building 7 had fallen down from damage too early. It went out on a news wire. Uh, other media outlets picked it up from the news wire. And Jane Stanley did report that. And actually, uh, the mail reporter... Uh, that that's basically going to Jane Stanley and reports at first. He got interviewed by We Are Change, and he's like, I don't remember any of that. And then they show him the video <laughs> of him doing it, and he's like, oh, that does seem rather bizarre, doesn't it? Mm, there should definitely be some kind of an investigation into that. Mm. But then, of course, the BBC debunked it with their little debunking fest, and they said, oh, it was out on a news wire. They didn't debunk anything. They, did ex they said exactly what I had predicted uh, had happened. And basically one of these spooks who knew what was going on absolutely put that out on the news wire and people picked it up too early that's what happened the same thing happened when they killed kennedy it was on the front page of the foreign papers that he was killed by leah harvey oswald hours beforehand you know so this Are is something serious? yes absolutely serious <laughs> absolutely serious go check it out for yourself my man i thank you for the call sean uh let's go to anonymous in texas anonymous you're on the line Hello, yes, sir. yes sir um i am a resident of the San Antonio outlying area, a smaller town in the region. Anyway, I'd like to report just three uh, things I've seen in the area. All right, go for it. Or two, something like that. Anyway, um, first of all, just today in the San Antonio Express newspaper, on the front page, uh, San Antonio chosen by Air Force for Cyber Command as, as San Antonio as their base. City. So what, the UAV spots are going to be there? Is that what you're telling me? The cyber command bases are going to be in San Antonio for, like, uh, new military operations? Is that what you're telling me? Uh, the article seems to say that it was very vague, mostly full of propaganda. Hold over. We'll discuss that and other things. Final segment coming up of the Info Warrior. Remember, if you miss any of the show, we got the podcast on the left-hand side of my little website, theinfowarrior.com.